Life Her Podcast. Her is me, her is you. Her is us, her is she, her is we. United we stand, baby, that her for keeps. I'm coming and I demand my space, I know it's free. I owe myself the world, they tried to count me out. I've been down some dark roads, they tried to pound me out. From cloudy to sunny, ain't think that I would make it out. I needed positive emotions to fill me out. Hey y'all, thank you for tuning in to Life Heard Podcast. You are getting ready to hear an amazing testimony with the next Madam C.J. Walker of Nails, London Moore. She is based in Maryland Temple Hills and she has changed the game in the nail industry. She has started her own school, which she just had a graduating class of nine students that, that graduated this past October 3rd of 2020. She is an amazing woman inside and out. Please listen to her testimony and I'm sure you will feel uplifted and inspired right when you're done listening. Thank you. Hi, London. Welcome to Life Her Podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for being on the show. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I don't know. I think I am a very interesting person. <laughs> but no, honestly, um, let's see. I am 32. I am, I am what you call, I guess, a triple threat. I am a black minority. I'm a business owner. I'm a mom. Um, I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. I'm a <laughs> so, so, um, tell me about what was it like growing up? Growing up, it was very interesting, very fun. Um, I think I got the best of both worlds is what I like to tell people because I come from a upper middle class family, but I was actually raised in the hood, which most people might be like, what? But my um, mom allowed my grandparents to raise us. Of course, my grandparents lived in the hood and my mom, she was out building her business and, you know, doing her entrepreneurial thing. And she was always there. It's just that we got to spend most of the time with my grandparents Monday through Friday. And then most of the time I would see my mom on the weekends or every other weekend. And, and live a good life wow that's a blessing to get the best of both worlds <laughs> everyone is um having this buzz knowing that you are the next madam cj walker of nails got you okay so basically how i guess i got coined that title um it's quite interesting and i would say i've been on this journey now of entrepreneurship and building my brand and, you know, launching my company over the last four and a half years. And two years ago, I launched the product, which is um, a nail acrylic. And basically, it's a three-in-one system. I actually, it's not private label. I actually have it manufactured and patent. And I basically want to just put something on the market that would help nail techs versus actually, you know, making it easier for them to be able to get into the field of nails and not feel like it was so difficult or not struggle because it really wasn't great products out there on the market or the products that were out there on the market wasn't as user friendly you know they were more for like professionals that had real knowledge versus somebody just walking into the nail supply store and picking something up and so over probably about eight months to a year i formulated you know the formula i went to a chemist i said hey i need help i got all this stuff done and i launched the product and so when I launched the product, I had no idea that it was going to do the numbers and go off. And people really, you know, was excited to use it and get it. And for Black Friday 2018, I did half a million dollars in sales. So that was wow. like, wait a minute, what? I didn't even know this was possible. You know, this was my first foot in the door for retail. And it's really taking off like that. And then um, I guess just every month, people still coming back, buying, really loving the product, really just going forward. And keeping it on the shelves is up to going stores. And I guess I can't do nothing but be excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is such a blessing for you. That's very rare. And, you know, sometimes people struggle with that. And as far as their sales and everything, but right. you just, you knew your niche. You knew what was needed and everything. So with you knowing exactly. that you were a nail tech, 
for how many years or do you never experience being an actual nail tech Prior, yet, so no, I've in. been doing nails. I've been owning my salon for five years. I've been doing nails for four years and I've been teaching for three and I've been owning my school for less than one. Wow. So from you doing nails and owning your own business, you saw things that were needed and you just went on with that and started to create your own sales and your own marketing strategies. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> that is so good. I'm I'm really happy for you to even Thank notice you. that because sometimes we we focus more on our failures and we don't try to make things better, but you switched it around and changed the whole game. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what was um your experience like when you were a nail tech before you even reached this level of success? Um, Honestly, the crazy part is I opened my salon before I even knew how to do nails, before I even knew about the nail industry, before I even understood how to properly run a business or do nails at all. I opened the salon because I was a nurse at first. And so I walked away from my nursing career because my child's father suffered from traumatic brain injury and my daughter ended up being special needs. So I was just trying to figure out something that I could do to basically recoup the same amount of income or close to it that I was making as a nurse, but didn't require me to actually go in you know, from a nine to five. And so I said, I'm just going to open up a business. So nails was not my niche. Nails was not nothing that like I had a passion or love for. I didn't even used to get my nails done. It was me just saying, all right, London, like, all right, make a list. I made a list. Number 22 was my favorite number. Nail salon was number 22. I thought it was the easiest and cheapest thing to do. So that's why I went with it. Opened up the salon. From opening up the salon, I found out that I had to have licensure and, you know, the people had to be licensed. And it was all these things that had to be done correctly in order to keep the shop afloat. And so in the process, I put myself through um, cosmetology school. In cosmetology school, my teacher had me teaching myself because my teacher didn't really teach nails either. So through that process, I was like, you know what? I think I actually like doing this. This might be something that was good, but I didn't have like, uh, oh yes, this is the light moment. You know, I had an, oh yes, this is the light moment when I realized my funds was getting low, all the money I had saved up was leaving. And basically I had to figure out what was going to be my next step to get an income really coming in outside of just the salon. And so I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? Boom. I'm going to start taking appointments. I started, you know, I put up, posted, I was taking some appointments. After I posted the work that I had been doing in school, I got my first four clients and I've been rolling ever since. Wow. That is amazing. So, you know, a lot of people see everything that you do oh so well, but a lot of people don't know that the hard, what hard work comes behind it, struggles, yes. ups and downs, all of that. Yes. Could you share some of the, that experience that you have and let people know that you doing some serious leg work behind the scenes for them to see of course. the end yeah. result. Of course. My biggest thing is, and it's, I know it sounds like a huge oxymoron. If you ever meet me in person or you see me, you'll think I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a very good person, very humble person. I'm fun to be around, but I honestly really don't like people. So with me not liking people, it's like, it's hard for me to, it, it's hard for me to like, you know, I would say deal with the customer service aspect in a way that certain people would like to be needed and greeted. And I've learned that over the years that customer service is super important because before I used to just be like, okay, you getting on my nerves block. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do block. But then I realized, okay, it takes customer service, which I want customer service when I go to any store. So why would I not think that I need to offer it? You know, like, yes. Yeah. And then um, I will also say from a standpoint of learning my actual niche and being able to rework it in so many ways, you know, like, of course, everybody does nails, anybody can do hair, anybody can do all of these things. The question is, how good can you do it? But when you mm -hmm. learn your niche and you learn what you're good at and you learn how to rework it over and over and over to make it better, that's when you truly become successful. And then when you become genuine and you really are true at what you do and you don't really waver from it, that I believe also aids in your success as well. My biggest thing probably was like, I, I don't know what you call it. It's like an entrepreneur fear of, all right, mm -hmm. I'm fearful, but at the same time, I'm taking that leap. And when I take this leap, I'm just going to keep telling myself, I believe in myself over and over again, no matter how much I'm scared, you know, to really go through what I'm going through. But I can definitely say that 
me being my biggest fan and my biggest cheerleader and believing in myself no matter what, that honestly is what helped me to stay on the path that I am and always encourage myself and never give up. So that's like probably my biggest thing was that entrepreneurial fear. Now I'm five years in and within these five years, it's not as strong anymore because I learned, all right, I didn't learn how to make 5,000. I didn't learn how to make 10,000. I didn't learn how to make 20,000. So now it's like, all right, if I keep doing that and reworking it, you know how to make 70, 80, $100,000 and you're not so stressed out or worried about is the money going to come and how the paycheck going to be secure and where the bills going to get paid from. So, yes, and I and I love that you touch base on fear because some people don't step out on faith by having fear, knowing that they could change the game if they just take away that fear and live their dreams. Right. Yes, most definitely. Most, most, most definitely. Yes, that is that is so important. And I and I love the fact that you just. You you have the energy to even uplift and inspire women. So tell me your experience with helping the women that do come into your salon or even work for your salon. Got you. So the whole reason I got into this business was to get the bartenders, the strippers, the drug dealers, like to realize that you don't have to be out there selling your soul and you can really make money legitimately in a real business and learn how to, I'm not going to say funnel your money, but learn how to collect your bag undocumented, which is why a lot of them do what they do because they have backgrounds or they can't get jobs or they didn't have a hard life or they don't have no high school diploma or they are lacking education but they're smart in other ways so my goal was to say okay if I can teach a mom they got four or five kids and they're struggling but yet I can show them that if you're making 45 50 dollars an hour that equates to about maybe 200 something dollars a day you work in five to seven days a week you almost at eight to ten thousand dollars a month that seemed like something that you can actually apply yourself to and go do and it's realistic because you're seeing me do it I'm not just talking it which a lot of people do and I'm also showing you how to do it and I'm giving you a place in a space of how to do it as well so that was like my biggest thing when I really first wanted to get into entrepreneurship just finding a way to help other people through my journey and my struggle so that I felt like I was giving back and then it's like once I started really being I don't I would get I guess I would say a silent mentor because I don't really call myself a mentor or a role model um because I know I <laughs> I live the best of both worlds okay but yes. I definitely will say I definitely will say that I have um really taken a liking to being able to inspire so many women women and actually seeing them grow you know it's crazy that a lot of my clients and stuff they've actually become my friends or they call me we hang out you know we do women empowerment i come speak at their events they're successful now they're owning their own suites and their own salons and they're going forward and they're teaching and they're really growing and it really makes me happy like i really truly love it and i even had male students as well that have really mm. gone on that have hit it big that are now doing like print work and commercial and one way all type of things so it's like all right london you're doing something right so whatever you're doing just keep doing it <laughs> wow that's amazing and you and you do need to keep doing it because you know that's an outlet for people to even change the game you know in so many ways doing nails or anything else entrepreneurship all of it so right so tell me how did your school your um school come about so school came about because ironically, it's, it's a long backstory. I won't go down the full backstory, but it's a long backstory because when I first started, like I said, I wasn't legit. I didn't even know how to get legit or how, I didn't even know there were proper steps to take to become legit. I just thought, oh, you open up a business, you open up a shop, you get your regulations and you go forward. I didn't know it was actually semantics and laws and stuff like that. So in the process, when I found out, you know, that I had to go through all of those things, I ended up becoming real abreast in the actual nail world and really teaching myself a lot and realizing that there was no good nail tech schools out. In, they actually, there was not even really any. And then the ones that did pop up, either they wasn't um, keeping their accreditation or they couldn't keep their stand, their, their school in good standing because they wasn't doing a good job at teaching the girls. And so the passing rate was like really bad and really low. 
And so I started doing something called skateboard prep because I realized when I was in school, you go to school, you spend all this money, and then you come out and you're still not making no money off of what you spent on your education. So where is the honest split? It isn't any, right? So I said, all right, well, I'm going to start just offering okay. state board prep classes so at least the girls can pass the state board to try to become successful. And so when doing the state board classes, I ended up raising the passing rate by 92% in six months. And so from doing that, um, I created a buzz for myself. A lot more people started finding out about me. The board actually took an interest in me. And um, when they reached out and asked me would I be interested in offering classes and they told me how to do it, I said, of course. So what really got me interested in the school aspect was I always loved the art of hustle. And when I started seeing how much money was in cosmetology and how much lack of respect that we had as cosmetologists, that's when I was like, oh, yeah, something got to change. And you got to, you know, like really put a stand on it. And really, when you go to educate them, not just not educate, when you go to teach them, not just teach them, but you educate them and let them show that you can really profit. You can really make money. You can really do good. This is a skill that you can feed your family off of. But before that, it wasn't really well respected. Before, if you tell somebody, oh, you're doing nails, you're doing hair, they be like, girl, you ain't making no money or you're struggling. But trust and believe, them Asians not popping these shops up on every corner for nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's right. So I see that you had your your first class graduation October third. Yes, yes. <laughs> How was that experience? I know that had to oh feel my so God. good. <laughs> I cried, I cried, and I cried, and I cried, and oh my God, we celebrated. We just like took that. We took three days and just like celebrated. I took them out to dinner. We went and we had fun. Then we actually graduated. Like I blew their graduation out the water. You know, like I got them cap and gowns. I let them take graduation pictures. We had the family come out. We had like speeches. Like it was just so like y'all did it. I want you all to realize you did something. But the crazy part was it was them making me realize no Miss London, you did something. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Maybe I did. You know, <laughs> they're like this is your end game to five years of you going through all of what you've gone through to get to where you're at and look at what you accomplished. You have a whole school. You're not just like a nail tech anymore. You're a whole president. You're a whole CEO. You're a whole boss. You own a school. I'm like, oh, wow. And that's just like all I've ever wanted was to achieve out it's like generational wealth you know like greatness so to leave a legacy for my kids you know and so this Mm -hmm. is something that no matter what if I never do anything else I know that I have my school and my school will forever create generational wealth for me and my family wow that is a blessing and how how did your your students feel once they completed it because you know Sometimes people have bad experiences. I've heard some horror stories about cosmetology school, nail tech school and everything. But just knowing they achieved something and they completed it and you did everything as promised. How did they feel? You want to know the crazy part? My students, even though they graduated October 3rd, still won't go home. Do you know they still (laughs) show up? It's funny. They still show up and take their clients and, like, act like they got their own little salon over in the corner with their little sex. They call themselves the seniors now, right? And so it's Uh like they come in, they take their clients. They're like, Miss London, we love it here. You can't get rid of us. And I'm like, y'all, it's a school. It's eight weeks and you got to go, okay? And they're like, no, we're not going anywhere. Kick us out, you know? So it just makes me feel really, really good to know that I'm really changing women's lives. Yes. You know, I'm really making an impact no matter what the situation is. They show up, they get the job done, they keep me on my toes, they tell me when I'm right, they tell me when I'm wrong. I can talk to them and vice versa. And we really just had a great vibe. Wow, that is amazing. And I see that it's state approved for 250 hours, right? Yes, uh-huh, yep. So once you finish with me, you become a licensed nail tech. You clock your 250 hours for the state board. Once you finish, I sign off on your paperwork. You go take your state board, and you are good to go. Oh, my God. That is amazing. I am so proud of you. I don't even know you personally. (laughs) But just the fact that you just changing the game, and you have so much more to come, Mm -hmm. it's going to be even bigger than what you can even imagine. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> oh, it will. It will. That just just put it out there in the universe. 
<laughs> God got you. Well, well, what is um for the ending? What is some uplifting and inspiring words that you could share with women that are listening today? Um, I would tell anyone. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. What would I tell my younger self? Okay, for anyone, because okay. I like to ask this. I like to ask this question to other people, and then I like to reflect on what my answer would be. So, what would I tell my younger self that? I know now that I didn't know then, it would 100% definitely be block the haters, listen to no negativity, and hustle, girl, hustle. That is amazing. Well, I know they're going to be hustling because your whole energy is amazing. What you're doing is amazing. It's just nothing but inspiring. And I wish you nothing but the best for your future. And I'm definitely want to witness it all <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes so thank you so much for being a part of life her podcast no problem thank you for having me thank you right. bye-bye thank you everyone for tuning in to life her podcast where we help heal women all over the world don't forget to follow us on instagram and facebook life her podcast and check out our youtube page as well and make sure you subscribe you can also look onto our website and you can purchase merchandise and listen to the podcast episodes i am yvette lloyd i am life her love yourself ladies take care of yourself and others you love dearly Stay tuned for the next session, don't make it be your last